the rain screams down from the heavens as once more the Dark Knight and the Clown Prince of Crime stare each other down on the Gotham City rooftops. Give up, Joker. You'll never win. Batman rumbles over the sound of the downpour. It's over. Joker's eyes sparkled with insane glee as he grinned back at his arch nemesis. Oh, Batman, he crooned. My oldest friend. How long have we been playing my little games? You should realize by now that nobody wins. The fun is in the playing. Batman snapped at his old foe's same old tricks. Enough, he roared as he leapt at the Joker. Smoothly, the clown sidestepped Batman's dive. Too slow, old man, the Joker quipped as Batman sailed by. But unexpectedly, Batman's feet never found their footing on the slick rooftop. He flew forward, landing hard with a sickening smack on his face. Ha, Joker cackled. That looked like it hurt. You need shoes with better traction. But to Joker's surprise, Batman still hadn't moved. A blood-red stain began spreading out from underneath the bat's cowl. Joker and his cronies watched, confused, as the Batman slowly and unceremoniously began slipping further and further towards the building's edge. Um, Joker said, unsure of how to respond to the frankly bizarre state of affairs that had unfolded. Is he going to? Joker asked. But as Batman slipped over the edge and began plummeting limp down to the streets below, the clown's question was answered. Joker, for the first time in his life, was speechless. He stared dumbfounded over the edge of the rooftop at where his most cunning and brilliant foe had just completely eaten it and fallen to his certain death. Frantically, Joker turned to his henchmen. Did we do something to the roof to make it more slippery or something? Joker asked. No, boss, his goon replied. It's just the rain, I think. Joker and his cronies leaned over the side of the building. Well, I don't get it. Is this some kind of trick? One of his goons asked. What kind of trick could this be? Joker demanded angrily. I don't know. Joker was silent a moment. Then, we should check on him, right? Otherwise, we're just standing around on a roof like a bunch of clowns. Together, the Joker and his two henchmen made their way down to the alleyway to investigate. When they reached the street, Batman's blood had already begun mixing with the trash and rainwater. You should poke him, boss. One of the clown's goons said, breaking the tense silence that had come over the Joker's crew. You poke him! The Joker snapped back. That's what I pay you for, to do things like that! The goon leaned down and very tentatively put a hand to the mangled body of Batman. Well, I'm poking him, boss. Now what? Maybe he's unconscious? Joker offered at a loss. Well, turn him over, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Joker, for all his years of violence, never bothered to learn how to help a victim. The goon pushed Batman over and immediately the sight of him caused Joker's other henchmen to vomit. So, not unconscious, Joker reasoned, his hands holding his face in complete and utter shock. Batman's lifeless body lay sprawled out on the street, with three panicking clowns standing above him, completely unsure as to their next moves. Did we... did we just kill the Batman? One of the goons asked, an edge of excitement starting to creep into his voice. I mean, he just sort of tripped, the other henchman responded. Body trip because of us, right? The two men looked to Joker for orders, but the madman had deteriorated into a crazed, frenzied laughter. What do we do now, boss? People are gonna be real mad, right? Joker shook himself out of it, desperately trying to focus on the moment at hand. Right? <laughs> yes, he said. We should probably leave, I guess. Are we finishing the heist? His right hand asked. Oh, the heist? Joker thought for a moment, weighing the pros and cons. No! No point now, right? Well, do we just leave him here? Any excitement in his hired muscles' voices had died out, replaced by disbelief and apprehension. Throw him in the trunk, Joker ordered, finally starting to get a handle on the situation. Uh, we took the train here, he was reminded, which drove the clown over the edge. Then go steal a f car, Joker roared. We should plan our next move. Maybe we should kill Superman next, Joker's henchman offered. The three clowns were sitting in a quiet, empty diner, enjoying some refreshments. Beside the Joker sat the twisted corpse of Batman, still bleeding through his torn and bruised costume. Ha! Joker chuckled at his goon's suggestion. What? He's gonna be mad when he finds out you killed his best friend, right? Joker looked up from his plate, anger and derision flashing in his eyes. Yes, but how are we supposed to kill Superman? He demanded. Well, I don't know. His hired help responded meekly. We killed Batman, didn't we? Did we? Joker exploded. Or did he just fall off a roof and die like a f moron? Silence fell over the motley crew. But okay, okay, one of the goons offered. Uh, we have to do something though, right? We're a criminal organization still. 
And we have some good momentum going. Can we kill uh, Green Arrow? Joker's eyes lazily floated past his hired help and off into the distance. His boredom was already noticeably sinking in. Yeah, he conceded. I guess we could kill him. Whatever. Well, it doesn't have to be that, boss, his henchman said, sensing his boss's apathy. But let's do something fun. Fine, Joker caved. All around the three criminals, the dead bodies of diner goers littered the establishment. But with no one to stop the Joker from killing indiscriminately, he was free to murder without consequences. Two days later, Joker and his cronies are aboard a tanker anchored in the Gotham Bay. Please, the captain begged, just let me and my men go. That depends on how you answer these next questions, Captain. Joker laughed at the begging man. What are you transporting? Joker leveled at him. Unrefined uranium ore. Where is it? The captain did not hesitate. It's in the hold. It's not locked. That's it? Joker asked, incredulous and more than a little disappointed. No alarms or booby traps? No secret paramilitary security team waiting to ambush us? Joker said with a glimmer of hope in his tone. No, I swear, the captain answered him truthfully. Joker stopped marching forward and looked at the captain with genuine surprise painted across his face. Wait, seriously? We can just take it now? Yes, I told you, the man said. Joker sighed with apathy as he plunged his sword through the captain's chest without mercy. The man crumpled to the floor as Joker pulled his sword from the captain's chest cavity. I told you my guy Armstrong had a good tip, boss, a goon offered, clearly believing the lack of safety protocols was a clear victory. But Joker's twisted mind had other priorities. Let's just get the plutonium. But the same henchman cut into correcting. Uranium. Joker pulled his hair in annoyance and disappointment. Plutonium, uranium, who cares? He let out in a huff, storming off onto the deck of the ship. Just get it off the boat, he ordered his cronies. I guess we'll make a bomb or something. Weeks later, a disheveled and unshaven Joker grew has dwindled to only one remaining employee. No big plans today, boss? His only remaining goon asks, hoping for any hint of inspiration from the once esteemed Ace of Knaves. I was thinking I'd finish watching Real Housewives of Metropolis today, Joker told him drearily. You finished that yesterday, the goon said, clearly disappointed. Then I guess I'll start a rewatch, Joker shot back lazily. Look, his employee held up the day's newspaper. Crime wave hits Gotham. Where is Batman? The front page reads in thick, bold print. We did it, and everyone else is getting rich while we do nothing. The goon desperately tried to jolt his boss back into his usual megalomania. This is what you worked for all your life, boss. Joker kept his eyes down and on his cereal. While his pupils usually contained a wild, rabid energy, recently Joker's eyes had been bleak and lifeless, a shadow of his former self. So what am I supposed to do now? He asked his henchman. You can do whatever you want, the man replied. Joker took a moment to respond. Then, I want to rewatch Real Housewives. At that, his final remaining employee stormed off in anger. This isn't what I signed up for, the man yelled out, enraged by his employer's clear indifference. I could be henching for the Mad Hatter right now. Joker was left alone to his own devices, which suited him just fine. As he glanced down at the shuffled newspaper pages, one fell into his lap. Jobs, it read. Joker, at a loss for his next move and feeling completely devoid of his usual sick, twisted inspiration, applied for a job at Wayne Enterprises. As you know, his interviewer told him, Wayne Enterprises is a power player in almost every field of tech and industry. Our sphere of influence touches every living soul on the planet. It's tireless work, but it's worth it. Then, looking across the table at the Joker, the boss said, you seem like the dream candidate for the job. Welcome aboard, Mr. Kaiser. The Joker, sporting thick-rimmed glasses and with hair slicked back so as to be unrecognizable, said, Thank you so much, Mr. D. I can't wait to join a team. I think it will give me the real sense of purpose my life has been missing. Sitting at his new desk, Joker got down to business immediately. Where is all the money? He typed into the data search bar. His security clearance prevented him from seeing any results. Secret weapons projects? He tried. Again, no results were unveiled. When his superior strutted over to introduce herself, Joker tried to get to the bottom of his faulty mainframe. My computer is broken, he reported to Helen, his overseer. Oh no, what's wrong, she asked. I can't access the money or any of the secret files. I need access to weapons blueprints or lists of people we bribe. 
Helen burst into laughter, assuming the Joker's alarming confessions were simply well-meant jokes. After a long and arduous conversation, Helen finally managed to sit Joker down and explain to him what his position within Wayne Enterprises entailed. The office he'd been hired at was just about as low as the corporate ladder extended, it seems. And to the Joker's dismay, he was worlds away from being able to access sensitive information of any kind. What is our office even called? He asked, exasperated and bewildered. Well, um, we don't have a name, I guess, but we're very important. I get it, Joker said dismayed. We're the corporate accounting seatbelt. Helen happily corrected him. No, she said cheerily. We're more like a device that makes sure the seatbelt doesn't get damaged. A seatbelt protector. Joker's eye twitched at her words, and something inside him almost snapped. As she leaned into his desktop to help him sign in, Joker reached into his jacket, removed a knife, and held it over his head, nearly bringing it down on his new boss on his very first day. But suddenly, Joker thought better of blowing his cover so soon and stashed the knife away as Helen rose from the computer and walked away through the labyrinth of cubicles. Weeks pass, and Joker, against all expectations, grows to truly enjoy the routine and benefits his Wayne Enterprises job provides. One morning, as he brewed his morning coffee in the break room, one of the higher-ups asked to have a word with their newest employee. Is everything all right, Griffin? Joker asked, genuinely concerned. It wasn't my joke, was it? It's not your jokes, Johan, Griffin told him, casting a stern look in Joker's direction. Everyone enjoys those well enough. As a matter of fact, I'm looking over your end-of-month reports. Are my numbers off? The Joker asked. His boss turned the charts around, revealing crude drawings and childlike doodles all over the official material. Your numbers aren't just off. But some of these aren't even numbers, his boss scolded him. What is this graph supposed to be? Well, the data is complicated, Joker argued in his defense. At this point, Griffin continued, growing angrier and angrier. I have to ask, do you even know what you're doing? Because this work shows no indication that you have any idea how to even use... But the boss was interrupted abruptly when Joker smashed a microwave oven over the man's head. The bottom of the machine smashed open over Griffin's skull, leaving him blind and nearly mute. Joker's boss stumbled and struggled to right himself after such a concussive blow. You asked too many questions, Griffin, Joker said, his voice regaining some of its iconic hateful zeal as he spoke. He punched some buttons on the face of the microwave and the machine whirred to life. Stuck inside, Griffin's head bloated and expanded as the radiation consumed his face and brain. The man screamed, though the sound of his voice couldn't be heard as his windpipe was blocked by his swollen head. Is everything okay? Helen asked as Joker nonchalantly exited the break room. I heard a big noise. Yes, fine, Joker assured her. I just remembered I left something in the oven. Going to take the rest of the day off. The next day, Joker walked in conspicuously clad in an oversized overcoat. Morning, Johan, he was greeted at the door. Not now, Helen, Joker annoyedly waved her off. Wasting no time, Joker climbed up on his desk, standing above his fellow employees. As he began to give a momentous speech, he held what looked like a clear detonation device in one hand. Listen up, you groveling worms. You are cogs in the machine that seeks to destroy you. You are bootlickers of a capitalist state that seeks only to exert control over you. You do nothing. You serve no purpose. But right in the middle of Joker's monologue, his hiring manager, Mr. D, approached. Johan, can I see you in my office? He asked. I'm sort of in the middle of something here, Mr. D, Joker said meekly, launching back into his soliloquy. Your own families will not mourn your deaths, he continued. But the moment had passed. The energy had been sucked from his words. Is that it? Mr. D asked respectfully. <sighs> I guess, yeah, Joker conceded and followed his boss into his corner office. Close the door and take a seat, Johan, Mr. D told Joker as they both entered the privacy of his office. We have to have a slightly unpleasant talk, I'm afraid. Given the fact that Joker had openly murdered a co-worker the day earlier, he was pretty sure he had a handle on what Mr. D wanted to talk to him about. As Mr. D strolled about his office, not paying much attention to the Joker, the ace of knaves removed a gas mask from his briefcase and pulled it down over his head. Joker, likewise, wasn't paying much attention to Mr. D, and by the time he pulled his trench coat aside to reveal the gas canister strapped to his chest, he heard Mr. D's final sentence. I believe he took his own life. Joker was so perplexed, he hesitated bringing his thumb down on the detonator. He... what? Joker said, astonished. Ha! Mr. D exclaimed, seeing Joker's getup. What they say about you is true. You are a real jokester. 
But let's be serious. You're a real rising star here. Bruce Wayne himself took a shine to you. With Griffin dead, I need someone who isn't afraid to dedicate his whole life to this job. Joker slowly lifted the gas mask over his head as Mr. D kept talking. I want you to take his position as Regional Management Assistant Vice Supervisor. Are, are you sure about this? Joker said, bewildered. Mr. D assured him that he was in fact sure. Joker gleefully accepted the promotion, all thoughts of gassing his coworkers having flown from his head. A few weeks later, Joker was running his own corporate meetings. He was the boss now rather than the newcomer, and a whole boardroom of employees were at his beck and call. After hours one night at the local dive bar, Joker had gone for drinks with some of his employees. Who will drink with me? He asked the room, clearly already drunk. Helen? Drink with your boss, Helen. Helen! He droned on, annoying all those in the room. Eventually, Joker drove all his employees out of the bar with his drunken stupor. Don't want to drink with me, he said as he stormed out. That's fine. I was going to poison you anyway. Maybe. But as he walked into the street, two shadowy figures were waiting for him. Merrily, Joker began to stroll home. But his old supervillain sixth sense for danger alerted him that he was being followed. Joker began to pick up his pace, hoping to lose the two men tailing him. His stroll turned into an all-out sprint as his followers began chasing him in earnest. Nobody can outrun Johann Kaiser! Joker yelled into the night as he turned a corner. To his surprise, however, as he turned into the nearest alleyway, his face was met with the brutal swing of a baseball bat. Within moments, his muggers were kicking and beating him as he lay helpless on the ground. <laughs> his old laugh escaped him. You all just made a very big decision in your lives. Very big. <laughs> Desperately grasping up for one of his attackers, Joker managed to take hold of the man's head, driving his thumbs into his attacker's eye holes. You see what I mean? Joker yelled before he was torn off the man and held still. Gotham is my town! Joker raved, the adrenaline in his system, bringing back some of the old crazed clown in him. You're just bloody tourists! I make the rivers run, I make the sun go down! You don't know who you just crossed paths with, but you will! You're just another wannabe tough guy who... One of the muggers said as they revealed themselves from the darkened alley. But this man's voice was eerily familiar. Boss? Is that you? The man said, catching sight of the Joker. Hello, Gaggy! Joker said, greeting his old henchman like an old friend. I see you've branched out into new, more pathetic ventures. Gaggy was surprised to see his old boss, who had all but disappeared from the criminal underworld for months. With the rumors Batman was back, we was worried he came for you, Gaggy started to say, but Joker wasn't listening. Don't make up lies, Gaggy. It's unbecoming of someone of your stature. Well... Where you been, boss? His old employee asked. I've been working, Gaggy. Having been released by the muggers, Joker didn't even give his old crew a second look as he started walking off into the night once more. Find something that gives you a purpose, Gaggy, the clown said as he walked away. You can't sit around forever waiting for a man in a bat costume to assault you. What kind of life is that? The next day, Joker proudly showed off his scars and bruises to his coworkers, joking around as they asked where he'd received such a beating. Where is Batman when you need him? One of his employees asked. His corpse is in my closet at home, Joker said, causing a roar of laughter to erupt from the break room. Another coworker offered that his wife had also been mugged recently, sympathizing with Joker's condition. No, is Cynthia all right? Joker asked, but she's fine. Batman even got her purse back, the man said. Hearing this, Joker spit up his coffee all across the floor. He instantly got up close and personal with the man. She saw him? He interrogated. Y yeah Joker sulked away, unsure of how to digest this strange new information. That night, Joker walked home his usual route. He looked up to see the bat symbol shining in the night sky. He walked into his high-end apartment as he did every night. Hanging up his coat in the closet, kicking off his shoes, Joker sat on his reclining chair, absentmindedly listening to the news. What channel is Real Housewives on again? Joker wondered aloud. The rotting, decrepit corpse of the Batman hanging empty-eyed by one of the hooks in his closet. You could say the Joker won this battle, but how does Batman do when the whole universe needs saving? <laughs>